Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Bradley Penrod. For the Jehovah's Witnesses that may watch this video, please understand that this is not a personal hit piece against you. Instead, it is a charge against the governing body for having deceived you. And I wish to show you this uh, with, with the video series that I will produce. So I want to dig into the, the founder and the history of the Jehovah's Witnesses today. The founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses was Charles Taze Russell. In 1870s, he established the Herald of the Morning uh, with 6,000 copies to today, which has millions of copies, which is known as the Watchtower Magazine. He organized a Bible study group in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His primary goal was the publication of his material, which denounced organized religions. His followers were known as the International Bible Students or the Russellites. Charles Taze Russell died on October 31st, 1916. But here's the thing. People follow him because they think he's a great prophet of Jehovah. But the fact is, he is not, he is morally bankrupt and dishonest because he even lied under oath about his credentials and his schooling. For example, uh, he was questioned about his scholastic standing. He said that he had attended school only seven years of his life at public school, and he had left school when he was about 14 years of age. Charles Taze Russell, uh, he also lied once again whenever he was under oath uh, in a court case w between uh, Russell and, and J.J. Roth because he Russell accused Ross of libel, so they, they went to court over this. And the fact of the matter is that attorney Stanton for J.J. Uh, Ross questioned Russell about his scholastic uh, achievements and criteria. So I want to show you that, for example, in March 17th, 1913, they went to court over this. And the fact of the matter is that Stanton questions Russell over this and I want to share an, an excerpt from uh, the uh, court records, and this can be found at the Watchtower Society. So he, uh, Stanton asked him, asked Russell, he says, do you know the Greek alphabet? Russell replies, oh yes. Stanton says, can you tell me the correct letters if you see them? Russell responds, some of them. I might make a mistake on some of them. Stanton asks, would you tell me the names of those at the top of page 447? I have gotten them right here. Russell responds, well, I don't know that I would be able to. Stanton says, you can't tell me the letters uh, of what they are. Look at them closely and tell me if you know. Russell responds, my way. Stanton says, are you familiar with the Greek language? Russell responds, no. So Russell goes from acting like he has a mastery over the Greek language to saying that he's going to make a couple of mistakes on the Greek language to ultimately admitting that he has uh, no understanding of the Greek language. And yet people put uh, their faith in this man because he's a great prophet of God who, had, uh, who has heard from Jehovah. And they put their faith in him because they believe he to be right. But yet he... Uh, He's not even morally, he's just a man. But why would you put your faith in a man who has shown to be morally bankrupt? And I want us to continue on and see that he also says that in this same instance that he, he does not, he has never taken any higher learning courses. He has never taken a philosophy class or a systematic theology class. He has basically no formal education in understanding the Bible. And I'm not saying that you need a formal education to understand the Bible. I'm just saying that that if you claim to have these credentials, if you claim to have these uh, the criteria necessary for a job, you really need to be able to show that you have the proper paperwork. And I want to continue on and, and show that, uh, w you know, whenever Russell died, he was succeeded by uh, uh, Joseph Rutherford. And in 1931, Russ Rutherford changed the name of the organization to the Jehovah's Witnesses to distinguish between his followers and the followers of Ru uh, Russell. 
And, you know, under Rutherford's leadership, he expanded the publication of materials. And the fact is that he expanded it so much that, you know, he had uh, like a hundred books and, and pamphlets. And yet whenever he, as of 1941, he had these books and pamphlets translated into 80 different languages. But here's the thing. He basically, like he didn't, he didn't sit back and just, you know, enjoy his power. No, he strengthened his power, his grip on power to where the point is that uh, the, the members of the Jehovah's Witnesses, it was said to question the judge, which is Judge Rutherford, is to question the authority of Jehovah himself. But I want us to, to as we continue on, uh, the judge died on January 8th of 1942 from cancer. So the, the third president was Nathan Homer Knorr. He assumed the position on January 13th, 1942, and it is under his leadership that the Watchtower concocted the infamous failed 1975 prophecy of the Battle of Armageddon and the end of the world. Now, the fact of the matter is, as of this recording, we are still here. The world has not ended yet. So what does that tell us? It tells us it is a false prophecy by the Watchtower Society. As I continue on, I want you to see that, uh, you know, e and even uh, Nor, he didn't see the Battle of Armageddon in the end of the world like he said he was because he died in 1977. Now, the fourth president of the Watchtower was Frederick Franz. During his tenure, a high-ranking member of the governing body, which is the, le the leadership body of the Jehovah's Witnesses, he left the organization and exposed the history of the false prophecies spewed by the organization. This was Frederick Franz's nephew, Raymond Franz. In 1983, Raymond published Crisis of Conscience. This book highlights uh, basically the inner workings of the Jehovah's Witnesses and it, it also discusses the failed prophecies of the Jehovah's Witnesses going all the way back to Charles Taze Russell himself. Now, I have said multiple times in this video that they have provided a false prophecy. Now the question is how do we identify a false prophet according to the New World Translation Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20 through 22, it says this. It says, However, the prophet who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. And in case you should say in your heart, how should we know, the, uh, know that the word of Jehovah he has not spoken? When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word does not occur or does not come true, this word is not from Jehovah and he did not speak it. With the, the prophet spoke presumptuously and you must not be frightened at him. So what, what it's saying here is that even Jehovah, even in the New World Translation, it says if that the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and they get it wrong, then they're a false prophet. So the fact of the matter is, governing body, you have lied to your people. You have lied to them and you have covered up your false prophecies time after time. You've made excuses for why they didn't come to pass. You would even blame your own people. But the fact of the matter is, according to the New World Translation, which is really a, it's a sad translation at that. It's a translation that is made to, uh, to go with your twisted doctrines, even according to your own translation, you guys are a false prophet and you will be held accountable for this because you have lied to your people. And because you're lying to your people, you are allowing them to go straight to hell. You should be ashamed of yourself, sir.